Got Good him? one, buddy. I saw a bit of bit of cup. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. Got one. Big spalbos, big walleye, <laughs> big perch. Wallies. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, that is cool. Got him. You got one? It's got to be a smallmouth. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's how deadly the Ned Rig is. Why does it feel a little bigger? Oh, whoa. OK, Angelo. That's cool, that was pretty right? cool. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Fishing Canada Adventure. Today, we're traveling to the extreme northwest portion of Ontario aptly named Sunset Country, a mere 20 some odd hour drive from Fishing Canada headquarters. Yeah, that's all. It's a piece of cake. I don't know who you're trying to kid. It's one beast of a drive. However, if you're looking to put yourself in one of the best all around fishing areas in not only the province, not only in all of Canada, but arguably in the entire world, this is the real deal. It's got a species list that reads like the who's who of North American game fish. Walleye, muskie, northern pike, smallmouth and largemouth bass, lake trout, speckled trout, whitefish, crappie, and a whole lot more. Sunset Country in northwestern Ontario has one of the most diverse fisheries you'll ever find. On this trip, we're traveling to the legendary Lake of the Woods, also known as L-O-T-W or simply Woods. This massive body of water is over 70 miles long, as well as 70 miles wide. But because it contains more than 14,552 islands, all of which are in its northern reaches, you never seem to be far from shore. By the way, did I tell you it has over 65,000 miles of shoreline? Now you heard me refer to this as an adventure. Well, that's because before the fishing even starts, we've got a 20 mile boat ride through an endless array of channels and islands. It truly is some of the most spectacular scenery you'll ever encounter. And that's just to get to the cabin. This in the middle of nowhere cabin called Uncle Mark's Outpost is partially owned by Canadian YouTube fishing sensation, Jay Siemens. Jay and his business partners have put a lot of thought and hard work into this place and it shows. The makings of this trip started way back in April of 2023 when Jay joined us on an episode of our Outdoor Journal radio podcast to discuss the fishing lodge and outpost business. So I make fishing videos for a living. Put them on YouTube, it's a pretty, it's a pretty wild thing because I grew up watching the Fishing Canada show every Saturday, Sunday morning. My buddies Spencer and Scott, they, uh, they told me they had bought a piece of property on Lake of the Woods and they're like, oh Jay, you should, you should join in on it. You should be a part of this. And I wasn't that interested until I found out where it was on the lake and me being a fisherman, I was like, this is in a very fishy area. Uncle Mark, he's just, uh, he's an uncle to everyone. I mean, I called him Uncle Mark, but then people that were not related to him at all started calling him Uncle Mark. And as we were brainstorming what to call this outpost, it, it was pretty clear because no one spent as much time or sacrificed as much. His hands have touched every part of this cabin. I've been to a lot of places and I, I, I like to think that this took kind of my favorite parts of all of them and combined it. Um, down to the detail of we have fishing kayaks and canoes. So if you don't own a boat, we can shuttle you down here and you can go fishing. You don't have to go far either. We saw some muskies spawning off the dock this spring and it's, uh, it's a pretty lively place. So now we have Jay's fantastic accommodations booked plus a bunch of his fishing intel. What more could we ask for? Well, how about some local knowledge from the one and only Mr. Gord Pizer, AKA The Dock. Gord lives in Kenora on the shores of Lake of the Woods and has always had his finger on the pulse of the LOTW fishery. Now, aside from some great fishing intel, Gord let us in on a very concerning piece of news. It's an invasive species called the rusty crayfish, and it's got a voracious appetite for pretty much anything that gets in its way. Got him? Good one, buddy. I saw a bit of, bit of, whoa. Yes. Yeah. Got one. Big spalbos. Big walleye, big perch. <laughs> <Wallies. 
They're rusty crayfish. We started seeing them in the late 1980s, maybe mid 80s. And they came in through the Rainy River system at the south end of the lake. And now they're all the way up the lake and they've moved west. People say, likely introduced by anglers. And personally, I don't buy that because uh, for all the years I've fished in Ontario, I have never seen anyone ever fish cr with crayfish as bait. So I think anglers get a bit of a bum rap there. I think they have naturally progressed from native areas in the U.S. Birds, there's a whole pile of things that could introduce them, and we've just seen them continue to, to migrate. And what they do is they actually kill and have killed and, and decimated uh, the, the natural crayfish population in Lake of the Woods. So virtually all we're left with are these invasive, aggressive, robust, rusty crayfish. Lake of the Woods used to be famous for the, we had magnificent cabbage weed beds, uh, uh, coontail beds. What the rusties do is they mow it down. They're not mowing it down as much to eat. They're mowing it down because it removes all the obstructions. And now we can prey on the native docile uh, crayfish in the lake. If we keep a couple walleye for shore lunch, our live well is full of crayfish parts. So everything is eating them. Invasives are invasives and they're not good. Armed with lots of info on the fish and the crayfish invasion, along with some hotspots from both Jay and Gord, we can now get on with the fishing. The first day of most of our Fishing Canada shoots pretty much always begin the same way. A cup of coffee on the boat at Dockside, surrounded by scattered fishing rods and open tackle boxes. During this state of what could be deemed disarray, Pete and I will talk about bait migration, water and weather conditions, and bait preferences that will allow us to best match the hatch, or go completely rogue and do the total opposite. However, since we now know about the ridiculous amount of crayfish in this lake, well, that definitely has some influence. With our dock talk completed, we now head out on the water. Next is all about experimentation. This used to mean days full of casting, jigging, trolling, rigging, running and gunning, and so on. Nowadays, we pretty much rely on our electronics to put us in the right zone. But in all honesty, sometimes, even when you find a mother load of fish, there's still that period of inactivity when they just won't bite. You can see them, but you just can't catch them. It all boils down to finding either optimum structure, cover, bait fish, or game fish, and then working hard at hooking into something, no matter what the species. Got him. You got one? Not big, though. Let's see what he is. It's gotta be a smallmouth or something, because I, I can feel some weight. Perch. Oh, it's a big perch. It's a Holy giant perch. <laughs> That's huge. Look at that thing. Oh my Whoa. God, on a Ned rig. Nettie perch. That. Oh, if you were keeping perch, buddy. Can you imagine getting lunch? getting yourself a shore lunch of those? If we get a few more of them, we'll start keeping them. Yeah. We have a little feed of them. That's a big perch. I'd you prefer that, that over walleye. Oh yeah. To be honest with you. How fat that fish is. <laughs> nice, buddy. <laughs> On a Ned rig. You are lucky. Yes. You are lucky. lucky. Today. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah that's, that's gotta be seeing. it. That's what was hitting me. Yeah. For sure. I'll bet you. Yeah. Got Good one, buddy. I saw a bit of bit of color. Whoa! Oh, net net material. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I saw a bit of color there. Not. Oh, big. No, big smallmouth. Yeah. Chunky, chunky little fella. Get, get over here. Get over here. <laughs> nice. Okay, first jerk hard bait, bait fish. Right? Good. That's that new jerk bait. That's the Mikey Burr's pike blue right there. Is that the one? Yeah. That's the one. He loves it. Yeah. No, just the Azuri bait. But there's a name for it, Pete. And I, right now, we're not sure what it is because a buddy of ours. Mikey Burris turned us on to it. He said, hey, you guys are doing Missouri stuff. You should look into this bait. First cast, nice fish. Okay, yeah, up in the shallows too. Oh, is it, yeah. Good. It's getting later in the day. Might be perfect time to switch our tactic. Yeah, I'd like to get a jerk bait bite going. My God, oh, that'd be fun. Wouldn't that be the best? Well, well now we'll know how big they are. Mm -hmm. Wally. Oh, Wally. Yeah. yeah. That's what okay. we saw. That's exactly yeah, what it was. Exactly. Come on, buddy. Exactly what it was. Mr. Wally. 
Boy, he, he bit so late, Ange. You saw that. A lot no, I saw him. I saw him biting. And then I didn't even, I just left the, the net right on the bottom and he just, he picked it up. There we go. Little guy. Start it up. Oh, sure, lunch. I don't even know what the size limit is here. We have to check that out before we start yeah, keeping them, too, that's right? that's true, too. No, but that's cool, though, That was though, pretty eh? cool. It is neat sure. the way they come they up. They came back up to the front just in time <laughs> yeah. to watch, to that watch the show. To watch the show. Little guy, maybe a Walter. perch again. Little wee walleye. We just watched him whoop, up, so grab the net rig and swim back, back let's down. Let's talk about that for a moment. So we spend most of our time now looking as opposed to fishing. People look at that and say, well, you know, fishing has changed. You guys aren't really fishing anymore. It's, the whole game's changed. And, and I go back to what I've always said about fishing. Fishing means different things to different folks. Everybody gets something different. A successful fishing means some days you can go out and get one fish, you had a great day, it was successful. Some days you go out and you get a million fish. Sometimes you get small ones, big ones. Sometimes you troll for them, sometimes you cast. Now, with this new technology, that, that's changed even further. So, I just want to throw that out there because there is that commentary being bantered about oh, that God. this type of technology yeah. has changed it completely and it's not fair or it's not fishing anymore. For us, it's what we now call fishing. Yeah, and I'll tell you something. What Ange just says, not fair. We've thrown to 100 fish today and we've caught four of them. Exactly, exactly. You, know, and you're, you don't catch them all. You do not catch them all. I don't care what they say. Now we're hearing more and more that this type of technology has changed the game to the point where it's not fair. And I just felt compelled to, to tool. Tell you. It's a tool for us. Yeah, if you, sure if you go, roofers used to use hammers all the time. There you go. It's not <laughs> fair. Well, it's not fair. They do, they don't use the hammer. They're doing anymore. that for efficiency, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That oh, that is cool. Why does it feel a little bigger? Oh, whoa. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's how deadly the med rig is. Watch. Yes. Yeah. Got one. You got one? Yeah. Little wee walleye, Little maybe. Walleye. Or... Oh, oh, another big, big perch. perch. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Sling the size that baby of in. these things. These things are wow. ridiculous. I had no idea Lake of the Woods had giant yellows in here, too, buddy. Wow. But right there oh. is delicious. Ooh. That is like the ultimate. Pretty fish, too. Eh? They are neat. Yeah, orange fins. Yeah. See the ones over in Europe? Yeah. They're about three pounds. Yeah. Like three, four pounds for those things. Yeah. A lot of them. Okay. I think you're going to give a ride home back to the Uncle Mark's outpost so. cabin. And you and a few more if we can get them. One of the a little fortunate tinge ones. in the cheek there, a little greenish tinge in there. Neat. What a fat fish. Look at them. That is a cool looking fish. Okay, buddy, let's go for a boat ride. Although we were catching the odd fish here and there, our fish finder was showing us way more inactive fish than feeders. It was also showing us some odd signals on the bottom that intrigued us. So we sent our underwater camera down to try and ID what we were seeing on the screen. Along every hump and flat sat hundreds of rusty crayfish, slowly making their way like zombies toward our camera, completely unfazed by the bass and walleye overhead. Honestly, it was like a scene from The Walking Dead. Got one claw out. Oh, oh see? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that is cool. So there's what we're dealing with down that's there. That's the red, the rusty on his back, eh? Yeah, look at that, the red claws on him. Look at that, he's hanging off. a bit of purple hue to it, eh? He's hanging off for dear he's life. He's not done look yet. That tail flipping. It's almost lobster material, buddy. <laughs> Easy. Ow. Look at him. He's trying to get me bad. Of course he is, that's his defense. And he won't, and he won't let go of that uh, Ned's. Well, we think he was attacking. He might have been trying to make love to it. <laughs> so, well, it could still be an attack. You never know what goes on down there, eh? Wow. And, and the that. red back, that's cool. Well, between Doc's talk plus our underwater footage, the inevitable just had to happen. That's lobster. That's surf and turf material. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's how deadly the Ned rig is. <laughs> He's going to fall off. Let him grab a hold again. I must say, it's pretty rare to bring one craw to the boat with rod and reel, let alone two. No wonder the fish are biting. They are stuffed. That's a lot of crayfish. Time to move on. Too many crayfish, 
and not enough active walleye or smallies. Next spot, a big extending underwater point off an island. Smallie, nice. Nice, look at you. Okay, lock her up. There's a few of them. Come here, buddy. You gotta love a lake, though, where you can come in to get... Oh, my God. Big small boats, walleye. big walleye, <laughs> big <laughs> perch. Smallies. Oh, it's crazy. crazy. This is, I, to me, I, I've always said that this may be the best all-around fishing freshwater lake in the world. The weather during this trip to LOTW is very typical of most of our shoots nowadays. And that's all over the place. Vova, our Ukrainian cameraman, made a very interesting observation when he first arrived in Canada last spring. He said, and I quote, Canadian seasons give no warning. And he's absolutely right. The last days of August condolo Sahara-like heat waves, which soon give way to frigid fall days, in a blink of the eye. Trading shorts for long johns and t-shirts for hoodies is now common practice. He jumped like he was that big. He sounded, he sounded good, but... Ah, little Smalley, I'm the Ozuri, eh, kid? Look at you. Boy, there's a ton of these up here. A ton look of fat, them. Look at how fat every fish we've caught is. Yeah, so. they're just full. Unreal. Full Can you imagine crayfish. that if that was like a regular oh, size? That 19 incher. Oh, mercy. Gary's inch. Tiny, whatever it is. Shore lunch? That's too small for shore lunch. They go. Oh, look. Oh, wow. Sauger. That's Sauger. Cool. That is cool. So this guy looks just like a walleye, but look at the coloration in this fish. These blotches like that, the spots all over the fins, like that. Still got that walleye eye, but look at here on the tail. There's no white spot on the bottom of the tail. I've fished a lot in the north, and I have hardly caught too many sauger. Now, that's a tiny one still, but they don't get giant like walleye. If you got a three-pound sauger, you get a big one. See you, buddy. This hot spot is one of many that we found on Lake of the Woods in northwestern Ontario. The waypoint on your screen will get you right there. We say one of many hot spots because Lake of the Woods is arguably the best freshwater multi-species lake in all of Canada. And that says a lot for this body of water. Expect to catch both walleye and smallmouth bass. And don't be surprised if an aggressive pike takes a shot at your presentation. The typical jig and some kind of plastic will always work but don't neglect suspending jerk baits or even deep diving crankbaits. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishincanada.com. You got, kid? I got one too. Why does it feel a little bigger? Oh, whoa. You got, kid? I got one, too. I got an eater, I think, bud. Yeah? No, maybe not. I, well, he's tight. He's tight. Let's see what this guy does. He's tight. What do you got? Oh, he shook his head. Don't get up now. Yeah. Same thing. Clone. I think they're small, eh? Well, they're just on the edge, but yeah. we won't. We're yeah. going to keep just a bit bigger than that. Yeah, that's just This guy is close, but we're both the same. Jeez, we're throwing away the best Clones. food in the world. Oh, I know, that's good eating for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go one inch longer. So we got a school of 30, 30 of these up below us, right? and there's some smaller. We don't see any bigger. That might be Ooh. a better one. I think it's, do you know the way he hit it? Could, it could be a smallie. A smallie? Yeah, a little bigger smallie. Get in out of the way, yeah, just in case. Maybe. Have a peek. It is a walleye, for sure. That's got to be an eater, doesn't it? That's an eater. That's one we can keep, That's buddy. That's an eater. I got to get him in the boat first. Yeah, true enough. He's not on the plate yet. No. <laughs> That's an eater. That's it, right there. That's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, perfect. That's on the high side of eating. Tonight we guy. eat. <laughs> be crazy. There you go. Look, they're just loaded in here. Let me it put this in the live well. 
is hiding. This is the smallest one yet. He's lucky. Come on, be, be a little bigger, please. Why does it feel a little bigger? Oh, whoa. Okay, Angelo. Is he? Yes, I got him. It's not bad. Oh, there you we'll go. We'll take that. We will take that. I chucked it out in about 20 feet of water, Ange. 20, in 20 deep, okay. Plus feet of water. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. The old gold head Ned. There. Beautiful little walleye. Not bad. Look at this. Let's just show you the camera this. This is kind of neat. On his fin there. I don't know if they're leeches. Like, is that looks like a is? leech. Yeah? Yeah. I think they're... Two little leeches? Something like that, yeah. Weird, eh? Look at the orange on his fins, too. Okay, buddy. Thank you. Although we didn't catch a 30-inch walleye or a five-pound smallie, our trip to Uncle Mark's outpost was an outstanding one. With our live well full of perfect eater-sized walleye, it fueled a short dinner for the ages with our gracious host, Jay Siemens, and the now famous and always humble Uncle Mark. As you can probably tell, Ange and I highly recommend Uncle Mark's Outpost as more than just a fantastic fishing destination. It's a wilderness paradise that will pamper you beyond words. One of the nicest facilities we've ever visited. This is a bucket lister for sure. Getting there. Brought to you by the Outdoor Journal Radio Podcast Network. To get to today's unique outpost fishing destination, we first drove north on Highway 400, which eventually turns into Highway 69. We next turned west on Trans-Canada Highway 17. We continued on 17 all the way to the city of Kenora. We next turned west on 5th Street South, and then turned south on 6th Avenue, which eventually turns into Golf Course Road. This took us to the boat launch at Anasinabe Park. From there, we loaded the Prince Craft with all our overnight bags, shooting equipment, and of course, fishing gear, and headed on the 20-mile journey to Uncle Mark's Outpost Cabin on the fish-filled Lake of the Woods. Uncle Mark's is like no other outpost cabin we've ever been to. This beautiful cabin can comfortably sleep up to eight people with six beds. There's a full kitchen with refrigerator, a barbecue with propane, reliable and powerful Wi-Fi, and television for those rainy or cold and miserable days. There's power available at the dock for charging boats, and finally, Angelo's favorite feature, an incinerating indoor toilet, the ultimate luxury in an outpost cabin. If you're looking for the ultimate outpost fishing or hunting adventure, we highly recommend Uncle Mark's Outpost Cabin on Lake of the Woods in Northwestern Ontario. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Prince Craft Boats, the spirit of boating, Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in. And Ontario, Canada, in partnership with Destination Ontario. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure.